In today's video, we will be discussing Jody Arias. Jody Ann Arias was born on July 9, 1980 in Salinas, California. She went to Wairika Union High School and dropped out in the 11th grade. Jody began her love for photography at a young age. Jody met Travis Alexander in September 2006 at a conference in which Travis was speaking at for prepaid legal services in Las Vegas. According to the article entitled Jody Aris Timeline, Key Dates in Case of California Woman Accused of Stabbing Ex-Boyfriend 27 Times, quote, September 2006, Travis Alexander met Jody Arias at a conference in Las Vegas. At the time, Alexander was a 30-year-old motivational speaker and legal insurance salesman. Arias, then 28, was living in Palm Desert, California, and was trying to make it as a saleswoman and an independent photographer. The two had an instant connection and spoke on the phone every day. Court records indicate that the couple exchanged 82,000 emails. Roughly a month later, Arias would be baptized into the LDS church because Travis was a devout Mormon. Jody and Travis started dating in February 2007. Four months later, they would break up in June of 2007. Travis began dating other women. This made Jody furious and jealous. She slashed his tires twice. His new girlfriend began receiving harassing emails from a John Doe, and Travis suspected that emails these emails came from Jody. Even though Travis had suspicions about Jody's harassment, he still kept in contact with her. They met up on several occasions until Arias moved back to Northern California, according to a Bustle.com article. Jody and Travis's relationship was mostly sexual. Jody would record these conversations to use against him in court later. On the phone and texting. And Unbeknownst to him, she was tape recording him. You make me so horny. I seriously think about having sex with you every day. Several times a day. I'm really glad that we started. I think Jody recorded it to have a weapon in her arsenal to use against him. If Jody's behavior began to concern Travis's friends, and they even warned Travis she was dangerous. According to an abcnews.go.com article, quote, but Alexander's friends told 2020 that they started noticing red flags with Arias early on in the relationship. They said they alerted Alexander to the concerns and that they'd even grown concerned for his safety as things grew toxic and volatile between the two, end quote. June 2008, Joni had travel plans in Salt Lake City, Utah to meet her new boyfriend, and Travis had travel plans with his current girlfriend. Travis's friends and family grew concerned about Travis when they hadn't heard from him in a week. I'm adding the audio to the 911 call. I'll leave the description. Oh, sorry. I'll leave the link in the description to the full video. Okay, you're a good friend of, of Travis's, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, yeah. has 
he been depressed at all, thinking about yeah. committing suicide, anything like that? I, I don't think he's been thinking he committed suicide. He's been really depressed because he uh, broke up with this girl, and he was all upset about that. But I, I don't think he would actually kill himself over that. Has he been threatened by anyone recently? Yes, he has. Okay. He has a he has an ex girlfriend that's been bothering him and and um, following him and slashing tires and things like that. And do you know the ex girlfriend's name? Um, um, do you remember? It? Yeah. What's what's his ex girlfriend's name? Ask Taylor. What's, uh... And do you know if he's ever reported it to the police? Um, her, his her name is Jody. Um, I don't know if he's ever reported. Hold on. Yeah. Ask him if he's ever reported Jody to the Like, if Travis did. No, he hasn't reported anything about Jody's behavior. Okay, the tub is in his bedroom? Yeah, and I guess um, I didn't go in, but from what I heard, his roommate went in. There's blood in his bedroom mm-hmm. behind the door. Uh... And probably, and then he said it's all over. And then they went in the bathroom, and he's in his shower. Okay. So and the, his his um his bedroom is where in the house? It's upstairs. Um, and if you go up the stairs, it's on the left. It's the first door on your left. It's the only door on your left. Okay. And um, and the, it's just a big master suite bedroom up there. And um, he's talking to his friend right now. Um, there's a girl that's been stalking him um, and things, mm-hmm. and she's trying, and he's trying to. Uh, you might know some information. I hope my phone doesn't die. I'm on like one bar of battery. So. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just going to keep you on the phone until officers arrive. Either officers or paramedics arrive. Okay. Okay. I think I can hear the siren mm-hmm. now. His friend mentioned Jody in the 911 call. Jody was the first suspect in the case. When detectives entered the home, there was obvious signs of a struggle in the master bedroom and bath of Travis's home. The scene was described by detectives as bloody and horrific. Travis had been stabbed 27 times, shot in the head, and his throat was cut almost to the point of decapitation. His body would be found in the master bathroom. He was crumbled up in the shower. Crime scene investigation lasted three days. They found a bloody palm print, which detectives saved because they knew it would... It came from the killer. They also found a camera in the washer of his home. Investigators retrieved the memory card and the photos that were saved on them. The photos on that memory card would give the details of that day. There were nude photos of Jody and Travis in the last moments of Travis's life. These photos were also electronically date and time stamped. Detectives called Jody in for an interview and fingerprints. She told detectives that she wasn't anywhere near Travis and hadn't seen him since April 2008. There were more than just photos, a camera, and a memory card. There were hair samples as well that belonged to Jody. The investigators were beginning to have more and more evidence that Jody had killed Travis. Donation of her blood as well. Investigators say that blood, which was matched to Jody's DNA, definitively connects her not only to the scene of the crime, but to the crime itself. In many situations where a knife is used, somebody has uh, blood on their hands, and uh, it's not uncommon for somebody to cut themselves as well. That key piece of evidence was good enough for the state of Arizona to issue a warrant for Jody's arrest. You're 100% certain that she got in her car in California and drove to Arizona with the intent of killing this man? Yes. Investigators believe that Jody left her home in California with the gun and the knife that killed Travis, although neither was found at the crime scene. In a crime of anger such as this one, there were calculations that were taken beforehand. As for motive, investigators believe it couldn't be clearer. Jealousy is one of the main motives in a lot of homicides. Is this girl crazy? No, she's not crazy. No, she calculated this completely. 
five weeks after finding Travis's body, Detective Flores showed up on her doorstep in Wairika. On July 9, 2008, Jody was indicted for first-degree murder of, of Travis Alexander and was arrested at her home on September 5, 2008. She would deny being anywhere near Travis. I didn't kill him. I didn't take his life. Did you have anything to do with him? I have nothing injury? to do with his death at all. Lies told during this police interrogation, which the prosecution showed in court, hoping to prove that nothing Jody says, including her claim of abuse, can be trusted. What did you do with the gun? I don't have a gun. Were you at Travis's house on Wednesday? Absolutely not. I was, I was nowhere near Mesa. And I have pictures of you in Travis's bedroom with Travis, pictures of him, and... It's obvious you guys are having sex, taking photos of each other. Are you sure it's me? I mean, that because I was not there. There's so much evidence in that house. So much, and it all points to you. Do you have any recent cuts that are healing? Well, my cat scratches me, little things. These are all her work, you can see. This is her, that's her, I've got scars. Enough about your cat, but why is your paw print in blood? Uh, how can that be my paw print? Because you were there. If I was going to ever try to kill somebody, I would use gloves. I've got plenty of them. If you had never met him, you'd probably would still be alive. That's true. Yeah, but that's because you killed him. No. Jody, you did. I did not. Jody. You can't convince me otherwise. If Travis were here today, he would tell you that if it wasn't me. No. My job is to speak for Travis right now. And everything Travis is telling me is that Jody did this to me. After she was arrested and before her mugshot, she requested that she be allowed to be able to put on makeup and even smiles in her mugshot. She would claim she wasn't anywhere near him. Then she would claim that there were intruders and later that Travis was abusive. Jody's trial began on June 4th of 2015. She would claim Travis abused her, he body slammed her, and was a pedophile. She claimed self-defense. She's the one that did the stabbing. She's the one that slit his throat. And she's the one that shot him. This was a life or death trial for Jody Arias. If Jody was going to be found not guilty in any way, she had to explain away this evidence. Her defense attorneys say she, Jody Arias, insisted on taking the stand. Serious, you may come forward and take a seat, please. I was shocked. It's not often that you see a murder suspect in a death penalty case take the stand in their own defense. Did you saw this where the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, I did. Thank you. Jody Arias had changed her story twice to from not being at the scene at all to being attacked by two apparently professional killers dressed as ninjas. Jody Arias now had a third story. Did you kill Travis Alexander on June 4th, 2008? Yes, I did. Why? Um, the simple answer is that he attacked me and I defended myself. She now changes the story to self-defense. It was Travis's continual abuse. And on June 4th of 2008, it had reached a point of no return. The only path the defense could take was basically make Jody the victim, demonize Travis as much as possible. The strongest play of the defense was to point to Travis Alexander's hypocrisy, that he was viewed as a chaste Mormon when he was having this sordid sexual relationship with this woman. The defense introduced a much anticipated audio recording. You'll actually hear a recorded call between Travis and Jody. That's very explicit. The courtroom's full of a lot of Mormons and women. 
Travis's family, and we start hearing them having sex. I'm going to tie you to a tree and Oh my gosh, that is so debasing. I like it. <laughs> the sex tape was like a hand grenade thrown into this trial. You're bad. You make me feel so dirty. You are dirty. We are just horny toes. Jody Arias said she was physically battered by Travis Alexander four times. Her mission was basically to murder my brother again for a second time by destroying his reputation. He crossed the room and he started shaking me. And he body slammed me on the floor. He called me a bitch and he kicked me in the ribs. There was absolutely no proof that Travis had ever been physically abusive with her or anyone in his life in the past. Jody Arias would stop at nothing to make that jury hate Travis Alexander. What's the worst thing you can say about someone when they're not around to defend themselves? I went into his bedroom and Travis was on the bed masturbating. And I got really embarrassed. He started grabbing at something on the bed and it was a photograph. What was in the photograph? What was the photograph of? It was a picture of a little boy. I don't know how much lower you can go than labeling a charge of pedophile at somebody, but that's what she did. None of these claims were ever proven. Police never found child pornography anywhere in Travis's house. We hear Jody Arias' testimony about her tortured relationship with this monster, Travis Alexander. But what it all boils down to is what happened the day Travis was murdered. We were trying out different poses, and as I moved the camera, it slipped out of my hand. Travis flipped out, and he stepped out of the shower. So she claims he comes out. Renowned defense attorney Kathleen Zellner recapped what Jody says happened in Travis's bathroom. He lunges at her. And he picked me up. I was crouching, but he lifted me up as he was screaming that I was a stupid idiot. Flips her over in a body slam. And he body slammed me again on the tile. She recovers from it, though, and takes off down the hall. She claims now she's in fear of her life. It was like I pissed him off the worst I'd ever seen him pissed off. He almost killed me before. And now he was saying he was going to. She runs this way, according to her testimony, and then back into the closet. Exactly. So I ran into the closet. I remembered where he kept a gun, so I grabbed it. She grabs the gun. It's a 25 caliber. She continues out this door. Runs into the bathroom, Correct. to the middle of the bathroom, right. at which point she turns around. Right. Like a linebacker, he got kind of low and grabbed my waist. But before he did that, as he was lunging at me, the gun went off shoots him right temple through the left cheek. Basically, the gun went off, and she doesn't remember anything after that. I don't know if I blacked out or what. There's a huge gap. Do you remember stabbing Travis Alexander? I have no memory of stabbing him. Do you remember dragging him across the floor? No. Oh. I we're like, that's it? Are you kidding me? You sliced this guy up and stabbed him. You stabbed him in the heart. You almost decapitated him, and you don't remember any of it? The jury convicted Jody of first-degree murder, and she was sentenced to life in prison. Travis is described by family and friends as smart, funny, and successful. He dreamed of getting married and having children one day. He didn't get that chance. Jody took that from him. You already know my opinion on this one, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. Jody is a narcissistic psychopath who not only stalked Travis, but murdered him in cold blood. We will end this video with Luke 645. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Don't forget to subscribe for more true crime videos and hit that notification bell. Thoughts? Any other cases you would like to see? Leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.